Welcome to our lecture on GAN charts and timetables. I'm Sir J.M. of Novoleta National High School. Before we begin, let's see what you already know about our topic. I have here five questions, and what you're going to do is choose the letter of what you think is the correct answer. You would be given enough time to choose the answer after the question and the options are read. Okay, here we go. What is a production planning tool to plan and manage batch production? A. Venn Diagram B. Word Web C. Gantt Chart D. Flow Chart What tool consists of a row of times and a column of events in chronological order? Fishbone Diagram Timetable KWL Chart or a 5 element plot? Where can we make a Gantt chart or a timetable? PowerPoint, piece of paper, Excel, or all of the above? When was the earliest use of a Gantt chart? Production line, pre-war, World War I, post-war society, or research. Which is not a good tip in following a timetable. Ignore the schedule, identify the time, be realistic, or place essential tasks. Very good, we will check your answers at the end of the lecture, so better keep your papers. Also, make sure to watch the whole video so we can get a good grasp of what we are trying to learn today. Henry Gantt proposed a way of charting production planning and batch control. It is a sort of a top-down view of how end items are linked to their components in a timely manner. As the man himself is quoted saying, there are two sets of balances, one of what each workman should do and did do, the other of the amount of work to be done and is done. In other words, it is a clear path of what should be produced at the end of a certain period so that making a product is made as smoothly as possible. Here's an example of what a Gantt chart looks like. It shows a definite time with which a product should be done. Oftentimes, overlapping towards the next line of production, tasks are specified and the time it may take to finish them. Sometimes, the tasks on a current given time is dependent on the completion of the task before it. So, if we look closely, the Gantt chart provides us this view where we can see how far along we are in a project and how much time we still have along with how much tasks we have left. Where can we use Gantt charts? Gantt charts are much utilized in production lines, like factories, where products in a quota are assembled in a timely manner by the laborers. It smoothly flows the workload of all the people involved, ensuring efficient use of resources. Other uses of a Gantt chart is through projects. Individual projects benefit from this organization of time and resources to a point where finishing a task could be rewarded if done properly. The labor of the people involved are posted clearly along with their tasks. This makes managing both a simple and easy task. And that's how Gantt charts work. Let's go to the next one. A timetable consists of a list of time and possible tasks, events, or actions that should be done inside that allotted time. It can also be a sequence of events in a specific order, often chronological. The time can either be short-term, like hours in a day or days in a week, to long-term, like months in a year. 
Here's an example of a timetable, or in much simpler terms, a schedule. A timetable conveys the hours of an operation or the perceived time a task, action, or an event that is needed for those things to be done. It specifies when a task is done and when can the next one happen. It is in this simplicity that the timetable thrives. It is easy to make and easy to look at and follow. Once a certain time has passed, the next activity on the list can immediately begin. What is the difference? There's not much of a difference between the two, except the amount of information they both show. A Gantt chart is much more heavy on the details, as opposed to a timetable. Both show how a task can be done in a time span specified. But on a Gantt chart, whoever is responsible for a certain task is specified as opposed to a timetable where the tasks are just placed on a box. Making both might be a good thing to properly outline the way a project should go. In relating it to research, an important thing to note in creating both would be the research questions and the methodology of the research. Providing ample time for both would ensure better results along the line and better analysis from those results. The best way to make a Gantt chart using an Excel would be to download a template. Online, there are a lot of resources that we can use to make our Gantt chart, especially in a program like Excel. Let's choose the top choice. As you can see, there's already a resource for doing a Gantt chart in Excel. You just have to click it. Here's a project planner. With a simple click of a button, you can now download a Gantt chart. Save it to your computer. Okay, make sure that it's in Excel format. And once you've downloaded it, Open it up, and as you can see here, we can change a lot of different things. And uh, you can add name, add the activity, add the task that we can do. Okay. Research topic. And let's have another activity, which is devising the research question, I think. Alright, let's go with the research questions. You can also add a review for, of related literature. So here we have the column for the plan start. This is the plan duration where we can set up the periods of time that we want to use. We have the actual start date of whatever we plan to do and the actual duration. So from here on out, you can see uh, we can actually plan our activity and uh, use the numbers in the periods to indicate how long we plan for that activity to happen and we have we have the actual start and the actual duration with which we can uh, properly look uh, if we can we can properly look if we have followed the plan at least. that's why we have the percent the percentages of completion As you can see, it can be indicated in the chart. And once we change these numbers, you can see the table automatically changes with it. So we can uh, properly see whether we are achieving our goals in the time that we have allotted 
and see the percentages. For a timetable, we can just simply use any existing programs that we have on our computer and just set up a column, set up a row, set up a column, set up a row, and as simple as that, we can already start putting our labels, like we would like time here, or for this one, we have the actual dates that we want to use, okay? And, uh, and the beauty of using Excel, you can adjust the column size, the row size, to fit whatever we need to do it with, to do it with. And so, we can properly plot the things that we need to do, especially in uh, achieving our goals when it comes to research. So, you okay, can easily change the column size. Okay. Also, copy and it automatically changes the time loop, and then uh, yeah, if you want to change it to tasks, then you can do so. Just so we can easily see how far along are we in making our research, uh, what are the tasks that we need to do in this specific period of time, and uh, how we can further improve on our research. So that's how simple it is to make your timetable, especially uh, with readily available tools that we have. And uh, these would give us better chances in making our timetable. Once a Gantt chart or a timetable is made, following it is crucial towards finishing your research. Always identify the time you have. This will give you a definite resource to budget towards meeting your goals. Place emphasis on the essential tasks. Again, the research questions and the methodology to answer those questions should be given priority in the chunk of the time you have. Giving it importance would ensure better results and analysis towards a great study. Be realistic. Do not be as uptight as possible because it can compromise the results of the study. Place ample leeway on some of the parts of your project to ensure no burnout or cramming could occur. Add extra time on tasks. This is connected to the previous one. Providing ample time in and between tasks makes the people involved not so much stressed in creating this task. Our time is a valuable resource and how we spend it would mean finishing the task on time or in time. Lastly, glance on your work often. This would remind you the tasks still needed and the time you still have to finish the tasks. Looking this up once in a while would ensure proper adherence on the task on hand and eventual completion of the project. Thank you for watching the lecture. Let's check your answers. 1 is C, Gantt chart. 2 is B, the timetable. 3 is D, all of the above. 4 is A, a production line before the war. 5 is also A, never ignore the schedule that you made. I hope you learned something about this topic. Making and following schedules are totally different from each other, and ensuring that both are done would bring success on whatever endeavor we decide to tackle. One small step at a time. That's it for this lecture. Thank you and God bless.